Guys, we gotta talk about something. Now, I completely understand the idea of favoritism and something being good is completely subjective. And that, you know, whatever saying you choose to use, either beauty is in the eye of the beholder or one man's trash is another man's treasure, that's all fine. But your suggested hands, they're garbage. Now, don't get me wrong, there have been plenty of hands that have been suggested that are actually playable. And to those people, I appreciate you. However, this video is just going to be to clown on everybody else. Like, seriously, these are all the hands that you guys have told me to play. Here's it on the full screen. These are all of the hands on the range chart that you guys want me to play. And like I said, there are a few good ones, but most of them, just garbage. Unplayable. So here's what we're going to do today. I'm going to go to the Daytona Beach Racing and Card Club. I'm going to sit down at a 1-2 table instead of a 2-5 table, and I'm going to blast off with all of your garbage hands so that you can see why your hands are garbage. And I'm going to lose money. And this is your fault. Quick interjection before you watch my pain and suffering. If you do want to see me play your favorite good hand, you can leave that in the comments for me and I'll get to it. While you're there, consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel for more content. I think it's the least you could do after submitting all of these garbage hands. Without further ado, here is my experience playing all of your terrible hands at 1-2. We're going to kick things off here with the good old 3-5 off suit brought to you by Alan Fenn. Now, what better way to play this hand by to raising under the gun to 7.5x? That's what we do. We raise to $15. Folds back around to the big blind who makes the call. No one at this table knows what I'm doing yet, so I'm hoping my image can at least get me a couple pots before they start to figure it out. Flop comes pretty good. Comes 8-8-10. Big blind checks to us, and we bet 20 as a complete air ball. Big blind lets it go, and we take the first one down. I know we're going to get punished. It's just kind of a matter of when. Next hand of note, we're looking down at Jack-5 suited in the big blind. Grand Moff Gage says that the way to play Jack-5 is to limp, so when we're looking at two limps and the small blind completion, we check our option and see that flop. That flop comes 5-6 queen. We've got a pair, that's cool. Small blind checks, I check, and the next player just rips the stack in there for about 20 bucks. Folds back around to me, and I'm not here to fold today. I'm going to give the action, so I make the call. That player turns over 5-6 for flop bottom 2, so we're drawing pretty much dead to a jack. Board runs out 7, queen. What happened, guys? We lost? Wow, what a surprise. It's almost like this video is a bad idea. My god. Neiltron suggests, play a hand without looking. Yeah, okay, like I'm gonna do that. Sorry about your... I'm... What did I just do? I just raised a 22 blind in the small blind facing a button straddle. So, you may get your wish. Cards are dealt, and the big blind, three bets to 60. Folds back around to me, and I'm sorry, Neil Trons, but I'm going to look at my hand now, since we weren't going to see a free flop. We actually managed to look down at pocket eights. I think this is going to be one of those, like, he thinks, I thinks, he thinks kind of thing, where if I look, right, and I jam, he probably three bet my initial blind raise to push me off my hand light, but if I look at my hand and jam, I could probably push his hand off light from him trying to push me off light. So I think eights is a pretty good hand to do that with. I'm actually going to take Andrew's advice here and just go all in with pocket eights, and I get snap called. So not feeling terribly great about that, thinking we're drawing completely dead, but our opponent turns over ace-queen, so we are off to the races. Unfortunately, an ace comes on the flop, so we're pretty much dead. Okay, if that flop doesn't deserve a like, I don't know what does. That's right, we're going to scoop this monster pot after raising blind, so... I don't know. I guess it pays to be lucky. A little bit of strategy here from our friend Leonard. If Jackson offsuit always hits, then I guess it's better to raise now and get more money in the pot for when it does hit, right? Two limps to us, and that's what we're going to do. We're bumping it up to 17. First limper calls, and the second limper folds. So we're going to go heads up out of position to a flop that comes 3-4-9. This is not likely going to be a hand that we're going to win with at showdown, so the only way we can win is trying to bluff off our opponent. That's what we're going to do. We bet 28. Our opponent thinks for a little bit and ends up making the call. We're going to go heads up into a fourth card, which comes a five. Now all the outs we had for our backdoor straights are gone. The wheel got there. There's a flush draw on board. And we pretty much just have jack high. So what do we do? Well, the book says we should probably just give up. But that doesn't make good content. We're going to fire again, this time for 55. 
Our opponent thinks about it for a little bit and then reluctantly makes the call. Not what I wanted to see. They don't have much behind, so they're really pot committed. Not going to be able to get them to fold for a big river bet. So if this is the destiny hand, I'm really going to need something to hit. We're going to go into that river, and that river comes a 10. At least we've got top pair, and this makes this hand a beautiful hand to just check and take our showdown value. Maybe if they had a draw, we'll give them a chance to bluff, because we're just going to call because we got top pair. They think about their option for a little bit and ultimately announce that our over pair is good. And we announce... We have no overpair, but we did hit a 10 on the river, so we show, and we take it down somehow. I guess that is how you play the Destiny Hand. With an under the gun raise to 10 and a call, we look down at Queen 10 in the small blind, brought to you by Ben Trout. Pretty much obligated to play, we toss in the call, and the big blind folds. We're taking Queen 10 three ways out of position, checking dark to a flop that comes 4, 7, 10, all clubs. We've got top pair at least, that's always kind of cool. Action checks all the way around, so we're going to get a free turn card. I think people are scared of the monotone board, and that's my cue to pounce. That turn comes the Jack of Diamonds, probably not one of the best cards for us to start barreling on, but we're going to stick to that initial game plan anyway and bet 20. Under the gun calls, and the other player folds. The field has been reduced to heads-up action only. We're going heads-up to that final card that comes a 9. Now, all the draws that weren't already there kind of missed, un unless I guess exactly 6-8, but... We're just going to bet 35 here. I don't think it's going to take much for any other sub-marginal hands to fold, and if we do get raised, then we pretty much know we're behind. Well, unfortunately, that's what happens. Our opponent raises to the low, low price of the rest of his stack for about 80 total. Now, I know it's not that much more, but we know we're pretty much never ahead here. This player is also shown to trap three streets with absolutely monster hands for that big, oh, surprise, gotcha factor on the river when he goes for the raise, so... I just do a little bit of Hollywooding and then toss my cards in, and our opponent is nice enough to show ace six of clubs for the flop nut flush. So yeah, you got us, brother. Alrighty, now it's really time to blast off. We've got seven four. I'm sorry, four seven in the small blind facing an under the gun straddle and five callers. Now I don't know about you guys, but I can't think of a better hand to just blast off with with a squeeze than four seven. So we pump the action up to forty five. Folds around to the hijack, who thinks about it for a little bit, and then ultimately makes the call, and the rest of the players fold. Now, unfortunately, this player only has about 60 left in stack, which is not good for us. It means they're kind of pot committed, and we may not be able to bluff them off as many boards as we should be able to. Maybe we should have thought about our squeeze size to $45 after looking at our opponent's stack sizes. Maybe we should have thought about picking a different hand than 4 7 to squeeze with. Maybe we should have thought about this entire video. This is so stupid. Please send help. Not sure how we got here, not sure what we're supposed to do, but when the board comes Queen, Jack, 8, I'm kind of feeling through. For real, though, I'm really not sure what we should be doing here, because if we just jam, then they're going to have a lot of hands that just completely call us off. If we check, that does give them an opportunity to jam, which does let us get away from our hand a lot easier. If we check, and they check back, then that signifies a lot more weakness, and maybe a, a jam on the turn will get the job done more often. So... I think I'm going to take that route here. I check, and our opponent checks back, which is kind of cool. Turn card incoming that comes a deuce of hearts. It's complete brick. Doesn't change the board at all, unless our opponent has exactly a heart draw. And I think now we should jam on this brick card so that our opponent can get away from more of their drawing hands. So I jam, and our opponent goes deep into the tank. Eventually, they do find a call with ace-king. So props to her on making the call, but it is nice to find out that we are actually still alive. So... We're looking for a pair on the river, and that river does pair. Let's go, except it pairs their card. It's a king, and that completely solidifies their win. So, yeah, I don't know. Andrew, I tried to make your 4-7 hand work, but you got to give me something better to work with next time, all right? A couple people have suggested 6-8 suited, which actually is one of my favorite suited connectors. So, let's give it a whirl. We've got 6-8 of diamonds in the cutoff facing two limps, and we raised it up to 15. The button and the blinds get out of the way, and the limpers come along. The longer it's going into the session, the less and less credibility and respect I'm getting from my opponents. Wow, fancy that. We're going three ways in position with one of my favorite suited gappers to a flop that comes nine, three deuce, one diamond. Both the limpers check to me, and in this spot, I think I can actually get away with a steal here since we do have some equity with backdoor straight draws on each side of the straight and the backdoor diamond, so I bet 25. The player who just doubled up off of us from the previous hand thinks for about a minute and ends up folding, 
and then the last player follows suit. See guys, I know what you're talking about, multi-way bluffs are easy. I just hope that I can maintain just a little bit more credibility for as long as I can. So let me ask you guys this, how could we possibly stay loose without playing 7 deuce? Also, why'd you leave me on red, Greg, from Greg Goes All In? I challenged you to a heads up match and you left me on red, I swear I'm coming for you! 7 deuce, under the gun, we raise $16, we get one caller, we're going heads up out of position to a flop that comes 889, one club, pretty good board for our range, pretty good board for our hand, we got backdoor draws out the wazoo, pretty good for playing 7 deuce, we bet $22 as a <gasps> please fold kind of bet, our opponent does fold, we show our 7 deuce for the haha got you with 7 deuce, that's all the screen time you're going to get from me, Greg. Guys, look, if I don't control any of the cards being dealt, and you give me three hands to pick from, I'm just going to pick whichever one shows up first, and I'm sorry if it's not the preferable one. Jack 9 suited is also my girlfriend's favorite hand, so... It's not like I can't not play it, right? There's a button straddle and a small blind limp, and we bump the action up to $22. Doesn't take that long before the action folds all the way around, which, to me, in this session, is going to be an absolute win. Here's some other hands that folded all the way around. Drop it. Quick congratulations to Mr. Ken Todd for his big pot win with Queen Jack of Spades, and thank you again for commenting a decent hand this time. Unfortunately, I couldn't pick up Spades this session, so we're going to go with Hearts, but it's suited and just as pretty. We've got an actual hand this time, and we're going to raise it up to $16. Finally, no one is giving me any credibility as there was a limper who calls and the both the blinds call, so we're going in position with a hand that's got decent potential, four ways to a flop that comes. Three, Jack, Queen, oh my goodness, we've got an absolutely monster hand in a multi-way pot in position with no credibility. It's time for a monster payday. Checks all the way to me, and we bet $27. I cannot believe my eyes as I look around the table, and they just drop like flies, and everybody folds. It was so aggravating to have that happen. I mean, there, was, there wasn't even like a club draw or a straight draw to call us off. I know I blocked pairs, so like, eh, whatever, but like... Come on, really? <sighs> Whatever. At least we win a fairly decent sized pot with a good hand. For our final hand of note, in our last big squeeze play, gonna go out with a bang, we've got Queen 3 in the small blind. Now first and foremost, apology to these individuals who actually commented Queen 4, but I wrote it down wrong, so I hope Queen 3 will suffice. There's two limps, and we squeeze up to 21. The big blind cold calls, and the second limper calls. So we're going three ways out of position to an absolutely bloated pot that it, you know, we can't complain about the flop, it comes queen high. Now, I think that we can certainly bet here, but in this moment, I took a step back and just kind of asked why. Like, are we betting for value? Like, what are we getting value from? We could get value from tens, from club draws, but if our opponent has a queen, since we have no kicker, we're pretty much just drawing very slim to a three or a chop. So, we, are we betting as a bluff? I don't think that makes sense. We've got top pair, at least. We do have showdown value, so I don't think we'd be betting as a bluff. So, I just decide this is a good candidate to just go into check call mode, give our opponents a chance to try to stab at it. I check... And it checks around. So we're going to get a free turn card incoming that comes a king. Definitely not the card I wanted to see. It puts an over card to our queen, so I'm definitely not comfortable betting now. So I check again, and it checks around a second time. Maybe I can't actually get away with betting some decent rivers. That plan goes completely down the drain when the river comes the ace of clubs. Pretty much everything got there. Club draw got there. There are over cards. Jack-10 got there. So definitely not feeling confident. We check, just kind of planning to go check fold, but uh, it checks around. And somehow we win at showdown. Yeah. What is this game? I have no idea how we win this pot, but uh, yeah, we're scooping in the last big pot we're going to go over here, so at least that. Just remember, at the end of the day, this is your fault. You commented those hands, not me. So, hope you guys had a decent time watching me play all of your garbage hands at 1 2. Here's the session result, and now I'm very confident based off this result that none of you will comment garbage hands in my comment section ever again. Wait, we made 200 big blinds? What? <laughs>